Welcome to the DOC, Dose of Courage podcast, where courage crusaders from all across the globe come and get what they need to become bolder, more confident, and courageous enough to be who God has called them to be, do what God has called them to do, and take possession of everything he said they could have. I'm your host, Courage Molina, Chief Courage Crusader. Let's go. What's up, y'all? To all my first-time listeners, hello. I'm so glad that you are here. Go ahead and subscribe. You are going to love it here. For all of those who have been rocking with me for a minute, thank you for your continued support. Uh, Thank you so much for sharing on your social media, tagging me. I'd love to see those. I would love for you, if you haven't yet, I would love for you to take the time to rate and review the show. The ratings and reviews are what help it to be seen by more people. Um, It'll help more Courage Crusaders find the podcast that they need to go out and change the world. Okay, so I definitely need you guys to help me out with that. Um, today, I'm so excited. Like, I'm really trying to keep like my whole professional. This episode is sponsored by Voice On, but I can't. Okay. <laughs> this, uh, the reason I'm so excited is because this episode is sponsored by the Courage Mastermind. I oh, know I love the Courage Mastermind, and enrollment is open. Let me say it again enrollment the doors are now open for you to enroll in the courage mastermind um it i don't even want to get ahead of myself and tell you when it starts but i'm so excited that it is back we had a few cycles of the program last year that were insanely um effective and successful just seeing so many of the women that came through the program where they are today the things that they're doing it's just bananas like it is really truly bananas and so that's why i love it i love it because it actually i mean it actually does what it sets out to do and that's not always the case with every um coaching program okay let me get let me get my sponsor get my sponsor voice on this episode it's sponsored by the Courage Mastermind. I believe many of us have the tools to build the life of our dreams, but lack the confidence to actually follow through. What would you do if you were bolder and you no longer struggle with whether or not you were worthy or deserving of the life you desire? What would that look like? How would it feel to be free from your past hurts, putting an end to the bitterness and resentment you felt for years? Imagine having faith, like actual crazy act of faith that did more than just represent your beliefs and your hopes and your dreams, but that actually moved mountains. What if your journey wasn't a solo journey, but one where you connected to the most supportive and amazing people on the planet? Like, what would your life look like? How would life be different? If you use your words to speak life to yourself and others, what if your words could manifest the life you wanted instead of maintaining the one that you have? Imagine becoming so self-aware you began to take care of yourself and your needs so you could better serve others. So you began to serve from a place of overflow instead of trying to pour pour out of an empty cup. Think about how your growth, like just the growth in your knowledge and the changing of your mindset, how would it, it would ensure that you were continuously improving and always learning how to take care of the new life you'd created. Listen, let me just tell y'all right now, this isn't a theory, okay? The Courage Mastermind is a 12-week group coaching program that will do just that. Now, this program is... It ain't for everybody, okay? And it's not going to magically fix your problems. No, (laughs) no, friend, it's not going to work that way. You have to be a woman willing to put in the work with a right now attitude, right? You realize right now that you are stuck in a rut. And if you're honest, it feels more like a way of life than a season. You realize right now that you feel alone on this journey 
and that no one really seems to get you. They just cannot relate to the things you are trying to do. And you want to be a part of a sisterhood who understands the challenges that you face. Maybe you realize that you've been called and your spirit is ready to say yes to the calling, but you just cannot do it. You feel overwhelmed when you think about what God is calling you to do. Maybe you've allowed your mistakes, what has happened to you or your present situation to define who you are and what's possible for your life. Are you still being haunted by the pain of your past and you just cannot let go of what somebody did to you and you just feel like, you know what, man, they do not deserve my forgiveness. Maybe you're in the position where you believe that God is real, but with everything you've been through, you're just not sure he will bless you. I know so many of us are struggling. So many women are struggling in their marriage and, and so many things have transpired. And right now you feel like you have every right to walk away. He betrayed you. He hurt you. Things aren't the way they used to be. But when you look down deep in your heart, you know that you want your testimony to be one of overcoming. You just don't know how to get there. You are ready to fight for your marriage and do the work, but he's not really ready. Um, he hasn't left physically, but he's also not willing to meet you halfway. And you don't want to do this fight. You feel like you shouldn't have to do this fight alone. Maybe you're the person who's like a living martyr, right? You put everyone's needs before your own. You ignore the needs of your mind, your body, and your spirit, and you realize it's time you take loving yourself seriously. You, maybe you've come to a place where you realize that your fears, your doubts, and anxiety are really starting to interfere with your day-to-day -day life. And you don't know how much longer you can go on pretending everything is all good. Now, I know you've been ma maintaining in some of these areas, but this is the truth. If something doesn't change for the better, things will begin to get worse. Things aren't going to stay the way they are, right? They're not just going to stay here. They will continue to get worse. Um, maybe your marriage is troubled now, but are you headed for divorce? If something doesn't change, will it mark the end of your marriage? I know that's not what you want for your life. If you don't get out of this rut, you're going to slip into a depression. If you don't overcome this depression, those thoughts that you have about what life would be like and how peaceful it will be when you're not here could lead to suicide. This is like seriously life and death. Not just your life and your death, but think about the people that are waiting for you to say yes to the call, right? For those of you who are like, well, I just live an okay life. My life is fine. I just am not sure about saying yes to the call. There are people that are waiting to be delivered out of the hell that you know how to get them out of. But you won't do what you need to do so that you can answer the call on your life. No, I don't want you to think that. God would leave his people out. You don't have to make any changes, but let me tell you this. Help and deliverance for God's people is going to come anyway. But the word says, woe to you and your entire household. Because who knows, maybe you were created for such a time as this. I'm not a mind reader, but I understand what you're going through because all of those examples that I gave, they describe exactly what I was going through at some point in my life before I discovered the power principles of courageous living. And that just changed my life forever. If you are ready to be more confident, um, to no longer allow doubt, um, to no longer doubt your gifts and who you are and what it takes to accomplish you know, the things that you've been called to do, if you're ready for that type of confidence, this is the program for you. If you're looking to get to this level of self-love where you will be in a positive, loving, and caring relationship with yourself, no longer neglecting your needs, the Courage Mastermind is the program for you. I promise you, guarantee it, that if you have active participation, right? You got to do the work. 
and you complete the program in its entirety, I promise you will no longer have fear or doubt keeping you from moving towards what you really want. I promise you will possess a faith that is strong and active, pushing you to do what seems crazy because you believe what God promised you. I promise when things don't turn out the way you hoped, when you are disappointed by yourself, others, or even God, you will not get stuck. You will have the tools to bounce back and get back on track. I promise that this program will end with you having a positive outlook on even the darkest of situations and circumstance. I promise you will not give up in the face of the impossible. You will keep going forward until you reach your intended outcome. I can guarantee you that you will no longer whisper the desires of your heart or the promises of God. You will boldly proclaim the promises of God without apology. I promise you the bond you build with the women of this journey won't end with the program. The relationships might start online, but they will flourish offline. This ain't something that I heard about, y'all. It's what worked for me, and it's working for me even now, even as Chief Courage Crusader. If you are ready to get on a call with me, go to the website, couragemolina.org and schedule a call. Remember, enrollment has opened. I'm so excited. There are only 15 spots available for this program, and um, it begins April 1st. So don't wait, don't walk, run on over, schedule a call. Let's get on a call and, and talk about you know taking the steps to change your life. Yes? Hey? I feel like I should say amen after that. Amen? Amen. All right. To the episode. So listen, so listen, okay? This is actually a really great sponsor for this episode because it's talking about doing the work. It's not enough to know what I need to do or to kind of acknowledge some of the things that I'm struggling with. I have to actually put these things in place. And so for this month, February, the Bible study that I've been doing uh, for myself and also leading through the Courage Circle, um, which is the discipleship program, has been on leadership. And, um, you know, I've taken on some leadership roles. And now that the ministry, now that I've said yes to full-fledged ministry uh, and leading this women's ministry well, I want to know what does the Bible say about leadership? You know, what is it supposed to be? And so there are lots of things that came out of that study. Um, It's not done yet, but there are lots of things that are coming out of that study. But one thing (laughs) in particular, that has stood out. I wonder if this has ever happened to y'all where you learn a lesson. You're like, okay, I'm going to start doing that. And then the minute that you learn that lesson, you realize how much work you actually have. (laughs) Is that just me? Because that is how I felt. Um, I want to talk about using silence as a strategy or, you know, just making the decision to not say negative things and and i feel like let me say i felt like i previous prior to this study i felt like i was a very positive person i have a very positive and i am um in some aspects i have a positive outlook on life i'm not really interested in having conversations um about other people in their lives i just i don't know how that is helpful a lot of the things that i do the decisions that i make the conversations that i have for the most part, they have a um, a purpose, and I just don't see like what the part like what the point is of you know talking about other people and what they're doing in their lives, especially if it doesn't have any impact on me. But that left this gaping hole of of space for me to talk about um, people whose actions do have an impact on me um, and events. Um, incidences, exchanges, interactions, experiences that I've had with other people that might not have been um, necessarily to my liking, right? Like, so I didn't enjoy this event or this conversation or old oh, girl tried it or whatever. Um, it kind of left this space open because in those instances, I'm not talking about somebody else and their, what they're doing in their life. I'm talking about me and what somebody did to me or what somebody said to me, or said about me, or how an event went, or what I, you know, my assessment about somebody's skill based on my experience with them. So 
we're talking about truth here. What I said is true. I said what I said, and it was true. Um, but child, when you get in this Bible and you start saying, I'm going to actually be a doer of the word, um, and you pray before you go into Bible study, let me just give you that tip right there. Just give you this free little tip. Whenever you get ready to do a Bible study, I don't care who's leading it, if you're leading it, um, if it's one that you're doing independently, maybe you're in a small group or a life group or an e-group or whatever group they call them nowadays. Um, as you prepare to get into the word, the scripture, the text, you should do some troubleshooting um, through prayer. God revealed to me, you know, the areas of my life that you intend for this word to mend, to change, to strengthen, right? So um, kind of opening up your mind and your heart and your eyes, right, to what God is trying to say to you specifically through whatever the study is, instead of just, uh, instead of going to the Bible study saying, oh, I'm, yes, you're going there to learn about God. Yes, you're going there to get a better working knowledge, to increase your faith. Yes, to all those things. But the biggest thing about growing your faith is an application like applying the word and it's difficult to apply the word when you don't know what area of your life needs this application. So if you kind of pray that and think about those things ahead of time, that's actually how I landed on uh, leadership. I sat and I prayed and I was like, okay, listen, I got a laundry list of things that I need to work on or areas that I'm struggling. You know, which one is it that I'm going to focus on this time? And this, this time it was leadership. So Anyway, so now I'm in it. We're in this, I'm in this Bible study. And um, I get to Titus chapter three. Um, it's verse two. I want to say two and three. Yes, it's verse two and three. Um, and this, this section, this is not about to be Bible study. I just want to give y'all some background. Um, Paul wrote this letter to Titus. Paul um, was a disciple, an apostle. And he um, basically helped to um, establish churches for Gentiles, to bring the Christian faith to people who had previously been left out. And so there are all these new churches. And Titus is um, one of his protégés. And he wrote this letter to him to help give him some guidelines and instructions on how to set up the church leadership in these areas, okay? And then areas where they're going to have these new churches. So he's like a church planner. In biblical time, he was planting churches already all over. He wasn't just staying. He was helping to establish them and then moving on. Um, okay, and so Titus 3, 2 through 3. Um, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy hateful and hating on one another and that's the new king james version hating on amen hating on i just like that because i feel like oh that's not as contemporary as we thought that people are hating and hating on somebody else right uh, but what really stood out to me you know this is instruction for leaders to speak evil of no one so i just stopped right there because when I'm studying the Bible, I'm not just like during the summary to speak evil of no one. Now, there are not a lot of distinctions in the Bible. Um, like we have all these variables and gray areas. There are not a ton of those when it comes to good and evil. It's either good or it's evil. That's pretty much it. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be as malicious or salacious or scandalous as uh, one might think to speak evil of no one. Cause I personally, like when I first read it the first time, I mean, I've read Titus before I've done a Bible study on Titus before, but I was doing it really from a different mindset, but from the mindset of a leader, it allowed me to see this first thing to speak evil of no one. And I started to think like, well, I don't really, I don't really speak evil of people. Like I ain't really talking trash about like, I'm just, I just feel like I ain't doing that. Right. That's my initial thought. But then when you go further, you realize it's not just about speaking. Like, it's not just like evil things like you think. It's not just hateful things like you think. It is anything that isn't good. 
wives, come with me here. Come, come, let's go down this little rabbit hole together. All right. Your husband does something, drives you up the wall, like you are thinking, seriously, bruh, who do you tell about that? Now, one is true. He actually did it. You were a witness. You were a party to it. Whatever. I don't even know what it was. It could be something big. It could be something small. The way he handled the discipline with the kids, the way he spoke to you at the dinner party, um, the way he's been behaving. It could be any array of things, right? But he did something. You didn't like it. It is not a good thing that you're saying about him. Who are you telling about the stuff that's like, who are you telling it to? You telling it to somebody. If you like me, you saying it to at least one person. Like, girl, you need to pray for me. Let me tell you what this dude did, right? And that, that's kind of how we veil it. Pray for me. Let me tell you, especially the super saints, right? Pray for me. Let me tell you what this dude did. That's speaking evil. What about the people that you work with? What about the people that you live with? Maybe it's a sibling. Maybe it's a parent. And, and we are, listen, I don't want you to let yourself off the hook because you're not going around town trashing people. This is what I want you to start asking yourself every time you open your mouth. Is what I'm about to say of, about this person, is it good or evil? There are only two options, option A or option B. There's no none of the above. There's no all of the above. Is it good or is it evil? And when I started to ask myself, apply that good or evil, let that be the test of everything that I said about anybody, that means, you know, I, your girl's got to get real quiet. Real quiet. And before you start judging me, let me just let you know something. I have been married for 18 years, okay? I have a 23-year-old who is back home for a short stint, a 19-year-old, and a 17-year-old living in my house with two cats and a dog. I have also had my mother living with me for the past three and a half years. Okay. Now, I just want, no, no judgment. I just, we're going to take a little quiet time. I know we're going to take a little quiet time on the podcast usually, but we're going to take a little quiet time. And I want you to do like a mental scan of the people that live in your home. And the last time somebody didn't do what they were supposed to do, you needed to them to do, expect it for them to do. Last time somebody hurt your feelings, was right out rude to you, let you down, disappointed you, didn't hold up their end of the bargain, betrayed you, misled you. The last time that happened, did you tell somebody about it? And if you did, just so we clear, that is speaking evil. The word says to speak evil of no one. Now it doesn't say that you can't go to that person later in the day, that week, when, or even right there in the moment and say, hey, what you said was wrong, it was rude, it hurt me, this, whatever. It's not saying that you can't have a, co a crucial conversation with the person that you need to say something to, the person who's done you wrong or has wronged you or whatever. It's not even pretending like what you said ain't true, actually. It's not even pretending like what you're saying isn't true. It's even telling you, the scripture's even telling us to remember that we were once foolish, that we were once disobedient. I think we forget where we come from sometimes. And not once. I mean, I think it's being generous right now saying that we were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating on one another. I think if we're honest and we look at our lives and our heart, if we sincerely um, examine our hearts, stay even for the last seven days, the last 15 days, the last 30 days, there was a time in the last 30 days that we did something that was foolish whether it was based on our emotion or lack of information, we did something that was foolish. We were disobedient. We were deceived myself, baby, come on, deceived about what speech is okay and what speech isn't. Serving various lusts and pleasures. Let me just tell you right now, we hear lusts and pleasures and we immediately go to sex. I ain't just talking about sex. Yes, sure, sex, why not? 
but also what about the lust for attention, right? It's just an unholy desire. Lust is an unholy desire. Sex ain't unholy. And the to desire to have sex with your spouse, your one spouse, is also not lust, right? Because it's not an unholy desire. You telling me in the last 30 days, you haven't had an unholy desire, a desire for something that's not yours, a desire for something uh, with the wrong motives or for the wrong reasons. You want somebody to like and click and share for the wrong reasons. You want to be featured for the, like, come on. Not you haven't done that. I ain't necessarily saying you living in malice and envy, but it happens even inside the church, even for church people, even for those of us who truly and honestly and sincerely want to be more like Christ. That we can sometimes be hateful. We feel like it's righteous, especially if somebody has done us wrong. But we have to remember that sometimes we were disobedient. Sometimes people are doing you wrong because they're foolish, because they've been deceived. They want to mistreat you and put your name, throw mud at you because they think there's a competition. They don't even realize who they truly are in Christ, not understanding that what's for them is for them. So they don't need to throw mud on your name because no matter how hard you work, no matter how hard you try, what you get is for you and what you get can't ever be what was meant for them. Do you understand what I'm saying? So then I started thinking, okay, if this is... If this is the new expectation that I would speak evil of no one so that I could be peaceable, uh, gentle, and showing humility to all men, that includes women, by the way. That includes people we don't think deserve it because of their actions, their lifestyle, the way they behave, what they say, how they act, how they dress. They are different from us. They are also right? Showing all humility to all men. It doesn't say to all men who are in the church, to all the women who dress like you, to all the uh, married women, to all the women over 40, to all the women who got natural hair, to all the women who wear and weak. No. To showing all humility to all men. That's everybody, y'all. That seems, that's, listen, let me just tell you, I'm, I don't know about y'all. And I hope I don't sound ridiculous when I say this. But that love, that new standard um, of not saying anything evil and wanting to be peaceable and have this hum humility for all men, all, <laughs> not just some, not just the ones who treat me well or who not try in my life, right? Not just those, everybody. Listen, that was a very tall order. And I'm like, okay, well, I realize that in this day and age, and so, well, not just in this day and age, right? Obviously, because this is Bible and this was written how long ago? And it said we were once hateful and hating on one another. So it's, it's been going on since the beginning of time where people are hating and hating on each other. Um, but, you know, we kind of have this culture, this culture of the world, of society where complaint and complaining and venting and trash talking is um it's not only acceptable like it's it's okay like it's encouraged it's encouraged because it's true because it's true well i ain't lying i said that's like a fake right i say it what i say it so it's okay that i said these things because i wasn't lying it's okay that i said these things because i was an eyewitness i'm not just repeating what i heard i'm telling you what i experienced from somebody i'm telling you how this person is rude and i know they're rude how do i know they're rude because they were rude to me so i was not negating that it's saying shut up about it <laughs> shut up about it and so i started to think okay what is, how can I do this even? <laughs> if y'all know me, y'all know, like, I was laughing so hard because I'm like, really? <laughs> I'm so bad at this. And I didn't think that I was. And y'all might be judging me, but I don't care. I didn't think that I was. I thought, no, this is okay. All right, this is going to be hard, but I can do it. Mm -mm, listen, we got to have some, um, we need to have some strategy here. One. Um, the people who you love and who are um, who are kind of on this journey, this personal growth, uh, development, growing my faith, 
I'm going to be all that God has called me to be. So that means, you know, I need to become more like Christ, right? The people who are on that journey with you, um, let them know. Say, listen, that's number one. Tell, tell a friend. <laughs> tell a friend or 10, all right? Tell the people who, that you, who you spend the most time with. Tell the people, listen, think of the last time somebody pissed you off. Who were the first three people you wanted to call? If you dial the number and they, what would be the first number you dialed? And who would you dial the next three times or four times if nobody answered, right? So who's the first person I'm calling? First person I'm calling, probably Olivia. Let me tell Olivia. Then I got my best friend back home, right? Then I got my home girl here. Um, Latrice here. Then I got my homegirl Robbie here. I'm a call, I'm going down the line. This man and pissed me off. These kids then tried it. I was over here at this volunteer thing and this person is acting crazy. She clapped and I was like, girl, please don't let this clap back spirit get with you. And so I had to call a friend and tell them what was said to me during this thing or how I was treated or how this person is behaving. I probably got a good three to five people that I'm a call. Think about when you mad, you trying to vent three to five people. Call those, that's step number one. Call those three to five. Let me tell you what happened, people. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened. Who are those people? Call them up, all right? And when you call them, let them know this is your new standard, okay? because and not just that you want them to know that this is your new standard that this is your new standard and you are enlisting their help and their support that anytime you are not saying something good about a person this for the record includes celebrities people you know well people you don't know well right it's so hard bro i'm trying to tell you Call them up, tell them this is your new standard. Let them know that you need support in this area. Say, hey girl, or hey dude, guess what? When I call and I start saying this, if you can help me, it'll be great if you just shut it down. Now you can't rely on them, but you definitely want to enlist them to help support you and hold you accountable. That's number one right there. Two, start reflecting, right? At the end of the day, maybe you wanna get a journal, um, if you, first of all, if you've been following me for a minute, then you know, like, get a journal, okay? You need to be writing stuff down. <laughs> you can't depend on your mind as much as you think, all right? Um, and start reflecting specifically, especially I'd say over the next, like, maybe 30 days because you just don't know. Start reflecting over the conversations that you had throughout the day, um, when were you more likely to say something negative? Who were you more likely to say something negative to and about who? And um, start like, just like keeping track of it, right? Start keeping track like, okay, today, I didn't really talk to anybody today, so I haven't said anything negative. Talk to this person or talk to that person. Okay, boom, done, right? And then start writing down like literally, I'm not even kidding, y'all. I'm trying to help y'all. Start writing down some positive truths about these people. All right, excuse me. Start writing down some positive truths. It's not, yes, they get on your nerves, okay? Yes, they did it today. Yes, I get it. But there's something that's positive about them. There's something that you love about them. You love their style. You love their smile. Um, you love their energy, right? And start saying that. Every time you have an opportunity to, every time they come up in conversation, you do not have to speak evil of them. You can say, you know what? I just love her energy. She has such great energy. She's so bubbly. I just love that. She always has a positive attitude. You don't need to include, but she don't follow through with Jack. You don't need to include that, right? It might be true, but it's, it's not good to say, <laughs> okay? I love her energy. Or guess what? You have the right to remain silent. <laughs> that is true even when you're not under arrest. I know that if you, y'all know if you know this, but sometimes, not sometimes, when people are arrested, sometimes people are arrested. And when they are, police officer, whoever's arresting them, 
says, you have a right to remain silent. That's not a right that they are um, just now, you know, that's not a right they, right they only have access to right now. Like, oh, that only applies when I'm being arrested. No, friend. You can be free and you still have the right to remain silent. Kind of goes back to that old age adage. Um, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all, right? Keep it shut. You don't have to comment. You don't have to share. You don't. You think you do? You do not. Anything negative that's true about a person um, will be revealed through their actions over time. You don't necessarily need to warn people. Now, if it's your job or your position to say, hey, money is missing, somebody's short here, um, somebody didn't follow through, right? I'm more reporting on um, the outcome or whatever. I'm not saying they slept. There's a difference. So number one, tell a friend, tell three to five, three to five of the people you call and say, let me tell you what happened. Call them up, let them know you have a new standard. Two, you can write it in your, uh, write it on your phone, whatever. Start reflecting every day at the end of the day, the conversations you've had, who you've had them with, right? And you're just kind of doing this thing in your mind, right? Before you write it down, you're just thinking about all the conversations and then you're gonna write down all of the negative things you said, like who you said it to, um, I spoke negatively about this person to this person at lunch today, right? Just so you can kind of um, make yourself aware, ask for forgiveness, right? And uh, from the Lord, because this is, you know, this is mandated by God. Ask for forgiveness from the Lord so that you can move on and then start creating like a running list of positive things to say about those people. Now, listen, um, let me just say that again. Start making a list of positive things you can say about those people um, or for choose silence, all right? You have a right to remain silent, we'll keep it shut. Choose silence, make the decision to choose silence. I'm not in a, I'm, I cannot say these positive things about this. I ain't got nothing nice to say, nothing. I gave, I ain't Jesus, I ain't got nothing nice to say. Or sometimes we look through the Bible and we're like, well, even Jesus said, okay. So then you can choose silence. <laughs> I cannot think of any nice thing to say about this person and I have to remain in their company. I have to continue to work with them. Maybe they're on your job. Maybe they're a family member. Maybe you volunteer with them. Um, maybe you go to school with them. Okay, so then you can choose silence. Kind of reducing my time with them as much as I can and making the decision to not say anything about them ever. I'm just, I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't got nothing nice to say. I ain't gonna, so I ain't gonna say nothing at all. Listen. Listen, all right, that is it. I'm getting out of here. This was like, this was so hard. This I was like, hey. um, I think it's so important that we continue to go deeper in the word and we continue to challenge ourselves to grow and realizing that our standard is Christ, which is why, you know, studying the Bible is something that you'll do for a lifetime, all right? Um, be sure to... <laughs> Tag me when you share this episode. Let me know what you thought. Let me know. <laughs> Let me know on a scale of one to 10 how you doing. I'd love to hear how you guys are doing. Y'all pray for me. Um, make sure you use the hashtag Dose of Courage. Um, and again, this is your girl, Courage Melina, Chief Courage Crusader. Until next time, be strong and very courageous. All right? Love y'all. <laughs>